So this is an example of, uh, I guess, when you download the the Excel program, it, it's all in Excel. And yeah, it's been out for a while. People, I guess people just um, don't want to use it. In, in Dung Beetle, basically, this right here is, um, this is an RV session. And I basically took an RV session and um, transcribed all the perceptions. And then I give each perception uh, yes, no, or, or maybe grade. Sketches are considered perceptions. I, I, I simply separate them because uh, the values are different. The, the weighting values are different. It's not really a, a standalone program. You, you need Excel to, to run it. And the reason why I chose Excel is it's more, um, it's more accessible to, to everyone. Um, it, it's your computer program to decide whether or not to set now. Yes, exactly. The, this program is specifically for two choices. Debra uh, used an earlier version of the Dung Beetle for one of her projects, and maybe you want to... It's a project that we started. It was we were having 11 viewers predict the outcome of the presidential election. And we had intended to use the card scale, uh, which we're pretty familiar with, but um, there were very few suggestions uh, because it was people, and a lot of the viewers weren't used to seeing people. And um, so there were all these descriptors, but when you would start to go through the, the sessions, it wasn't really clear who they were describing. It turns out there's a lot more similarities between Romney and Obama as the potential candidates than you would imagine. But so when we used Alexis's system, which was the more simplified version of this, basically you're going through descriptor by descriptor and painstakingly deciding does it apply or not. But then we handed it over to Alexis and he did his calculations and we really were able to get a clear prediction for Obama. It was double blind study and all of that. So really it was very helpful and it really showed us the, the value of this. We could do that, but one of the problems with Dung Beetles, you, you'd have to grade it grade each perception based on the session. So you see over here, um, there's five different viewers for this particular uh, prediction. Um, and it would take a long time to do each individual viewer. I can show you one of the reasons why you should use it is that w when you enter like a perception, type in a color, it automatically um, recognizes your data type. So let's see, happy, they'll say that's emotion. Uh, let's see. How big is that list? Well, th this Dung Beetle only recognizes about 2,000 words. <laughs> so it, it, it's still in development, but you know, if, if you have something complicated, um, Xbox or something like that, that, that you can't recognize, you can simply click on that and um, We'll call that tangible. Alexis, what I am seeing here, and, you know, and I've got more familiarity with this than what I'm seeing just now, um, but I now understand the weight factors too. This would really be good for one viewer um, and one analyst. You can integrate multiple viewers and multiple judges. Tomorrow we're going to be trying to form new groups and you'll have other contacts with that people. I mean, this is just ideal to have a dumb beetle group. And it looks like it's ready for it. Almost. You know, you're going to make it more use of friendly. But that's for the group category. Right. Who I would recommend should be a good manager. Um, me? <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> app requires you to collect data. And basically, you can take all this data that you need, this right here, is all the data that app requires you to, to collect. 
and you can basically just copy and paste and paste it into uh, the Google spreadsheet so you don't have to manually type it in again. I previously asked if there was um, enough interest in um, people who wanting to learn how to use the, the dung beetle. I, um, I could possibly do like a webinar. Uh, yes, we, we've tested, we haven't tested the algorithm, but when I was talking about how um, the, this is projected hit rate candidate one, projected hit rate candidate two, these, these projections have been tested on, on real um, remote viewing sessions. I mean, I really recommend that you start a group of this. Use it as a prediction. You and others who are trying to do this. I mean, I think the only way we're going to know is getting predictive data and, you know, setting up a group which predicts data using that oh. feed I, I wonder what the name of your group ought to be. <laughs> 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 you know, maybe more than one. I mean, I think that would be terrific because the self-correcting idea um, is obviously a good one. These confidence rankings that you see over here, these are automatically calculated by the computer based on the data that you input. So there is no, there is no um, interpretation of how the system works. You input data and then it automatically calculates a confidence ranking. That's sort of similar to what, what May and, and Joe call elements, but you have more which are dynamic because it's every element in the remote viewing session and you put a yes or no into that um, and then Doug Beetle does the analysis. So in some way it's all the same thing. There's somebody that has to do the, what I call analysis in the net system. Your analysis is done differently um, and then Doug Beetle does, which is interesting, not only does it do the judging, but then based on the outcome it changes the weight factors. Is that a a, a summary. I mean, I'd love to see, you know, do this a hundred times. And let's see what, what happens. Is this based on the, uh, the star? Yes, it's based on the confidence ranking system. I mean, it's not just, this, it's not just stars. Like, uh, no, it isn't. But, right. But this is where hard would have been if he had continued. I think that's right, because TARG is only one of the right. things which has a weighting factor. And, and this, is, this is megafold better than the TARG system, in my opinion. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. <Jeff. laughs> TARG system? It's, it's somewhat similar in many regards. There's there's a lot of things our system does that this doesn't. And ours is maybe a little more user friendly. If you can, uh, I guess, conceptualize what Flame is and what Dung Beetles is. With Flame, they have a, they have consistent images. It's all hard coded, which makes the system really stable. And so, whenever they get a value, it's always that value. So theirs is completely stable. And as opposed to this, it's it's more, it's more flexible. This, but this is adjusting for the changes in circumstances. Right, right, exactly. Our doesn't allow for that, but then we don't have to because our tool doesn't change. Right. right. And here are the photo, two different IPSs going to it, um, which are chosen sort of external to the mm -hmm. whole program. But then you make the comparisons to whatever was chosen. Right. I'm amazed. I'm amazed that you've got to where you've got <laughs> based on the dark. It's starting a, with the dark. You know, I mean, I really am. You did. Mm -hmm. that amazing, the first this is an right. amazing piece of work. <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> I don't know. What <laughs> All right. Uh, any other questions, comments? Uh, I just want to know how you got so smart. I uh, I play video games. I play a lot of Pac-Man and. Uh, <laughs>
that's, that's how we do it. <laughs> All right, I think that's it.